you do have some women who may not be that mature. It may be their beauty and it may be that their weaknesses haven't been exposed because they're with a guy that's so immature that they look mature next to that guy. Today's guest, she is an educator, an entrepreneur, and author of the book, Sticky Situations, The Gift of Goodbye. I love that title. We're going to discuss relationships and loneliness and previous relationships and all that other good stuff. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Kiera Taylor. How are you doing this morning? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for that warm welcome, Sean. Yes. Returning guest, yes. second time. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it now. <laughs> yeah, right. I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to make this happen because I know you are a busy woman. Yeah, thank you yes, yeah, no problem. Let's let's jump into this topic because I don't want to waste any of your time. I love your expertise in this whole relationship stratosphere. <laughs> <laughs> is the dating scene as bad as people say it is? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and that's twofold, right? I say that yes, very boldly. Um, but it's it has its ups. Um, a lot of people now are being tricky with this dating with a purpose message. And so like I've run across a lot of those guys, and you give it, give it a shot, you get into the situation, and you're just like no, you're not. You lied. And so it's a lot of it's a lot of catfishing out there. Um, but it's some great guys too. I mean, I've I've been having a little luck. Okay. So. That's good to hear because <laughs> <laughs> you came in like, no. <laughs> it is it's, it's it's a mess. I can I can count on one hand um the thumbs up compared to I don't know, I need about 20 hands to count the thumbs down, but there's hope. There's hope. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there's hope. And, and when you talk about the dating scene, what what is the age demographic are you talking about? I would say for me, between 30 to 40. Okay. Um, and lately, I have been, you know, dating guys that are a little bit older. So I'm 32. I'll be 33 on December 12th. Um, and so, yes. Um, and so I've, I've mostly, for some reason, been attracting guys that are like between 36 and 40, right? Which is, it's pretty reasonable. And, you know, you think that around that age, guys are a little bit more mature. Um, and like I said, I've run to some guys who are mature, but maybe just not, are not on the same page about certain things. Like, um, you know, I'm growing in my faith. And so there's some things that's a no-go for me because I don't want to be pulled backwards um, or just, you know, different beliefs about different aspects of relationships. So not necessarily that they're not mature enough, but maybe we just have different beliefs or on different paths. Um, but then there are guys who um, don't call you back if you're not making no moves too quick for them. So <laughs> yeah. you have those who are just like commitment phobe and they're just looking for company because, you know, they're older and they want, you know, female companionship. So it, it's a mix. Mm -hmm. I, I had an interview earlier today. I was talking to uh, one of, of my good friends and mm -hmm. we were discussing relationships and stuff. And he was saying how most women don't know what they want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, and this is coming from a guy and he's in his 40s. And this is why I asked you about the age demographic. We're not talking about 24. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, it, it, big difference. But right. he, he was saying that sometimes uh, women kind of debo you into a relationship, kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, this is just what we're going to do now. Like, we never really made it official, but we kind of fell into this situation ship. <laughs> <laughs> no fall into the situation ship. <laughs> is, is, that, is that more common than we think? Absolutely. Um, like I said, I have met, you know, some great guys and I'm fortunate now, currently, I'm actually, you know, dating somebody who is on the same page as me and we're just seeing where it goes. Um, but, you know, some of the feedback that I've received is that 
you know, they're just shocked. They're, they don't, you know, want to get excited too soon because it's like, okay, well, you know, old girl showed me that last time. And then, you know, she turned out to be crazy. She was a nutcase. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely twofold. It's, it's men and women out there just playing games. So you have men who are scarred like women, um, because, you know, there are women out there who are treacherous, you know, and don't know what they want. Or like I said, you know, it's popular to say now I'm dating with a purpose and, and people really aren't ready for that. They like the idea of it. Um, and I got that feedback from a guy. Like they like the idea of the relationship. They like the idea of the commitment. But when they get into the thick of it, it's like, no, nah, just playing. Mm. I don't mean it. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and that's one thing I try to do about the show is I try to be an equal opportunity employer. You know, I try not to just mm-hmm. bash women or bash men. It's like, if you out here messing up, you just out here messing up man or woman. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So I thought I would just put that out there because this isn't like them red pill or, or, or blue pill shows. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I yeah. It's it's some women out there that done, you know, made it hard um, for us when we get these good men because they're a little bit more cautious. Um, but, you know, again, luckily, like I said, men and women are like, you know, I have met guys where it's just like, okay, well, I'm still willing to try it. Maybe with a little bit more caution, but so it's, it's women out there that are kind of giving us a bad rip. <laughs> mm, messing it up for the good girls. Yeah, the real good girls. The not real the good girls. Like they said, they good girls. <laughs> yeah, not the one that, you know, say I love Jesus in their bio and then uh-huh. yeah, cussing everybody out. <laughs> 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 what can you help what is loneliness and how do you, how do you deal with it oh that's a deep one um i think it's first important to understand the difference between being lonely and being alone right a lot of people confuse the two um loneliness i would say is an emotion mm-hmm. like being alone is physical i don't have company here you know, with me right now, I'm alone in my house. I have my dog Chase. Um, so that's being alone. But loneliness, I would say, is an emotion and it's a heavy one. Like to me, I liken it to feeling empty. Like you feel incomplete internally. That could be for various reasons, but you know, for the sake of what we're talking about, you feel incomplete internally as it relates to love, romantic love. You feel like this missing, um, right? And I've I've had my moments, of course, where I felt that, you know, you can be the strongest person on earth. um, But, you know, God created us, you know, to want companionship. It's there. There's I've met very few people who have the gift of singleness, um, which is very rare. So when I do have my moments of feeling lonely, the first thing that I do um, as a woman of faith is I affirm myself in the spirit. You know, I ask myself two questions. Two questions. One, what does God say about me? And two, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Um, And those two things usually put things back into perspective for me where I can shift from being emotional to logical. Because logically what that means is that I can't settle. I, I can't, I cannot settle. I'm feeling alone and I'm feeling lonely, but it's for a good reason. Because I have to ask myself, Mm. do I want temporary benefits from someone just to have company or do I want my permanent promise which for me is a God that they love right mm-hmm. you want temporary or you want your permanent promise um, and so that's the first thing I do and then second I would just say um, I bring myself out of victim mode into a place of humility and gratitude just for the people that I already have, just for the things that I already have. Because a lot of times we get consumed with what's next. Um, Who's the next guy? Who's the next girl? Who's going to be my next boo? Um, And we just forget to thank God for who we have right in front of us, right? Like we have multiple soulmates. I believe that my sisters, anybody who knows me, know those are my best friends. I consider them definitely like two of my soulmates here on earth. And so even though I'm not getting that romantic love, 
Why don't I pour into my sisters? Why don't I pour into my grandmother, my friends, you know, the people around me that gives me love unconditionally, right? So I have to bring myself back to a place of, of gratitude. Um, and that's me with all situations. Like when I go to feeling bad for myself and going into victim mode, just bringing myself back to a place of humility. Like I already have more than enough, you know? Um, I just desire more and there's nothing wrong with that. You just can't let it consume you. Mm -hmm. no. no, I love that because I read a quote one day that said loneliness will make you invite the devil himself over for tea. That's it. That's it. Because <laughs> with me. <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm glad you broke that down because the difference between of being lonely and loneliness, because you can be in a relationship and still be lonely. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I have been, you know, um, I talk about that in the last chapter of my book um, with that relationship, how I was, you know, with someone and, you know, had someone right in my presence, you know, consistently and just, you know, I just wept because I was just so lonely, right? Because if you're not, you know, like I said earlier, if you're in a temporary situation and it's not your permanent promise, which is agape love, you know, God's love, it's, it's not going to be fulfilling. It's not. Um, or it can only satisfy you for so long um, before you start feeling empty. So very true. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because uh, Jill Scott has that one song, one of my favorites. She says, I'm lonely yeah. when you're around. Yeah. Oh, that, man, that's a deep song. <laughs> Jill is deep. Jill is that girl. Real. Next to Miss Lauren Hill, because that's my number one. No, oh, Lauren's number one. <laughs> She's number one for me. Gotta love Lauren. She's still, people still talk about the album all these years later. That's it. One album. That's all it took. <laughs> How do you know when you heal from a previous relationship? Um, that one's pretty simple to me. I think it's when you're no longer emotionally triggered. Um, so when you hear that song on the radio that reminds you of him or her, or when you see pictures, um, and I think the biggest one for me, like since, you know, I've matured some, um, is when the idea or the thought of them being with someone else doesn't bother you. It doesn't bother you, right? Um, and likewise um when you're okay with the idea of being with someone else because um there have been breakups that have been so hard for me that it's like i can't see myself with anybody else that person has to be it right so i think it's, it's twofold when you are okay with the idea of them moving on and yourself as well yeah because that's, that's the hardest thing most of the time we can get past the favorite song on the radio or seeing the pictures as long as we don't have to think about them being with somebody else um but i think that when it doesn't matter to you anymore or you're not sobbing at the thought of them doing the inevitable like y'all have to move on um you good to go yeah and i, I like that because some people got their uh, spotify playlist you know, uh, me, me, I, me, me and Tyrone playlist. Not Tyrone. <laughs> you know, and you scared to delete it because you just like, you know, you want to be in your feelings. So you want to listen to your, mm -hmm. your me and Tyrone playlist. Get rid of the playlist. Mm -hmm. Yep. Saving them voicemails so you can hear that voice play back. You know how it be. <laughs> you know no no shade but and, and i like what you said about how are they okay are you okay with them moving on you know yeah. because i know when i went through my divorce i was like you know somebody please marry my ex-wife you could somebody please help take her. <laughs> somebody please take her <laughs> you know but no shade to her but i was you know i yeah. was i was hoping that she will yeah. find somebody else in her life to make her happy you know because your boy moved on but yeah yeah um, yeah, if you can be yeah. happy for for somebody else that you've been in a relationship with, I I do believe that that is some real healing right there. And it, it has to be right because here's the thing: um, even if you feel like somebody wronged you, right, they still have to move on with their life. Like they can't spend the rest of their life looking back at you. Um, and I used to be so upset because my reoccurring story, my reoccurring theme was that. 
for all of my exes, it was always, I'm the one that got away. And, you know, as a good woman, you know, it, it doesn't feel good, right? It sounds like, oh, you know, she's so great, blah, 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 blah. And for me, I'm just like, no, I, I want to be kept by someone. I want, you know, for somebody not to risk losing me and then look back and be like, oh, Kiara was a good girl. So I, I struggled with that for a long time. And 32 year old Kiara is kind of just like, and then it's okay too, to be the one that got away because everybody cannot be it for you and you can't be it for everybody. Um, you just can't. And so it's, it's okay to not be it for somebody and them not be it for you and you guys wish each other well. Mm, yeah yeah because sometimes you do have people who feel that the relationship always have to end on a sour note or you always yeah. have to hate your ex or like it has to be this mm -hmm. terrible thing that but it, it could be mutual yeah absolutely you know, that it's not working and maybe you should write a, a book on something or, or <laughs> like uh the one that got away or something like you should i think that'd be pretty good I love it, Sean. Every time I come on here, you you boost me up. You be, I feel like I can do some stuff when I get off of here. <laughs> hey, I was just saying, I mean, that's a, you know how many women that that's their, their story? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Most women, because, um, you know, and this has been very true for me, but a lot of the times, you know, men just don't mature at the, you know, at the time that we do. So most of the times we've given a lot of ourselves um, a lot more times than me and have. Um, and they're usually not in a place to receive that. You know, um, it, it takes you guys a while. And yeah, yeah, so, and yeah, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Well, here, here's, since we're here, here, here's my pushback. Since we're here, okay. Since, since we're here, here's, here's my pushback here. And, and correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. I understand that a lot of times people say that women mature faster than men and, you know, scientifically and, and all these other things. I, like, I, I get it. But yeah. my only thing is, what about the women who are, you know, you, you know, you're fine, you, you know, and all this other stuff. So you're used to men approaching you and men kind of acquiescing to whatever you want since the time you were 14 right you know yeah. guys start looking at you and then you get used to men just doing what whatever you ask so do women really mature or do they just play more on their beauty because you're not forced to mature because you're fine yeah I, I think that's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's it's both right. Um, some women are able to rely on their beauty. Um, and then you have some people who they are mature internally. Like I've always felt like in the feedback that I've gotten, not that men don't find me attractive, right? But I tend to connect with people that are super, super, super attached to my spirit. I've been told that from my friends. I've been told that from like, like, you know, romantic partners. It's just like your soul is like way of like way past its time. Um, but I do think in that likeness, you do have some women who may not be that mature. It may be their beauty and it may be that their weaknesses haven't been exposed because they're with a guy that's so immature that they look mature next to that guy. Um, and I'm guilty of that because, you know, in, in hindsight, now, let, make no mistakes, I was very much more mature than a lot of the guys I've dated. Um, they weren't caught up. But, you know, in reflecting on my adult relationships, I can honestly say I was mature next to them, next to those guys, because they were so here maturely, a great men, but they weren't, they weren't here yet emotionally. Whereas if you would have put me next to a guy who was here emotionally at that time, I probably would have been like this to him, you know, but you have nothing to compare it to when you keep meeting up with people who are here. It always, it's always going to look like you're here. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can see that. And, and it's subjective. I, like you said, I think it's yeah. to each his own mm -hmm. person, you know, but just scientifically in, in human behavior even like with waitresses right 
Yeah. Women who are more attractive, they get bigger tips. For sure. You know, just because of the attraction is there. And if you can play on your beauty for 20, 20 years, once you start to get older and you hit your forties, and I, that's not saying you can't be fine in your forties. I'm not yeah, saying, yeah. you know, but you got to realize that there's a whole new crop of 20 year olds and, and 30 yeah. years, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I was going somewhere with that. Oh, real quick. <laughs> yeah. Because on the last interview, and, and I have to say this, I was talking to, to my friend and he was saying how, when we were in the neighborhood, that you only were accustomed to certain people in different pockets. So you had people you met at church, you had people you met in your neighborhood, school, you know, and and that's it. So you knew who the pretty girls were opposed to who weren't. Mm -hmm. But now you have 10 million Instagram models and everybody's online, everybody's fine, right? Like- Yeah, 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 to your point, um, and I talk about this all the time with um, my friend guys. I have lots of friend guys. Um, you know, Jason is one of them, one of my closest friends. But shout it is so. Jason. Shout out Jason, yeah. plugging us together. Look, look, look at this bun. I but know, right? I, yeah, oh, he's amazing. But it's so true. Like it's very hard for me to date for women to date right now because it used to be that oh you had to be pretty and have some substance well now you got women who are both that are just easier to get you know I hate to say it like that it's just like you know I have my standards um you know as a a follower of Christ where I'm just like okay well this is what I will do. This is what I won't do. I won't engage in blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, whatever. But that girl right there, you know, she pretty. She got a nice job like you. She got a house like you. And she ain't got the standards. So let me just run on up here. And, you know, like, it's it's hard. You know, it, it takes a, a strong man to be like, no, I, I don't want a woman who's going to compromise her morals. Um, I, I, can, I can sit with it. But no, it's... Like you said, the Instagram models and, you know, their bosses in their own right. Um, and not saying that all of them, you know, don't have substance or, you know, don't have- No stance, shade to them. Yeah, for sure. But what I'm finding is like, that has been the repeat thing. Like, it's easier for me to just be with somebody who's a boss and she's beautiful, but her standards may be a little bit more relaxed. Ooh. That's a whole, that's a whole that's a show. Whole, we're going to have to come back for the other one. <laughs> we're going to have, yeah, because, and, and I know we have questions and stuff like that, but it's it's pockets like this that we got to jump into. Let's, let's do it. Okay. So as a woman with substance and a woman of standards and a woman of beauty, how, how does that make you feel knowing that guys are willing to take less than, and you have your standards because some women they will they will lower their standards to 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 be found even though they know they have them because they thinking i'm not gonna get a man with having these quote-unquote high standards i'd rather just kind of you know so how does that make you feel having standards knowing that there's a bunch of men over there when you know how dope you are as a woman no way really sean It, it makes me frustrated and that's the most it can get out of me uh, because I've done so much work on myself and I'm in such a healthy place. Like I said, I'm, I don't feel lonely, right? I have my moments of experience in there, but for the most part, I consider myself a woman who's alone. I'm single, I'm by myself, but I'm not lonely. I'm not desperate. I hate to use that word, but that's what it becomes. Mm-hmm. I am at a place where it has to make sense for me. It has to be right for me. And I could never feel bad about losing somebody who would want me to compromise my standards and my morals. I don't want it. Um, And I think that's just the difference between someone who is alone versus someone who's lonely. Because when you're lonely, you'll invite any company in. Like you said, you'll be willing to have tea with the devil. So does it frustrate me? Absolutely. Um, This goes back to one of me and Jason's talk. Um, he always, always tells me, like, keep your head up, sis. Like, 
you're beautiful. You are, you know, a great woman. And like, I commend you for being able to hold your standards. And I tell him all the time, thank you, bro. But it gets frustrating. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, but I'm also not really willing to compromise. I, I wholeheartedly believe that the right person, you know, will come. I'm going to attract the right person. If I just, you know, I, you hold out because you don't want that temporary thing. I want a permanent thing. So, and I, I kind of feel a little bad for the women that, you know, they join with because I'm just like, that's going to be fleeting. Um, either she's going to leave or you're going to leave because their foundation is not what it needs to be. If someone had to compromise their morals, their values, their standards, more than likely, that's not going to be a happy ending. So I don't even play those scenarios in my head, which is what we do. It's like, oh, something must have been better about her or that must mean that something is wrong with me. So again, I've done the self work. So it doesn't, it doesn't shake me, um, frustrates me sometimes at most. So. No, I appreciate the transparency. I, I appreciate it because I think somebody need to hear that, that they don't have to compromise. And like you said, you've done the work. Because even like the they show the one test on YouTube where they have the kid that say, I'll give you two cookies if you hold out for another minute. Yep. yep. You no. Know? So yep. it's like, are you willing to hold out? You're you're playing a long-term game. Right. You know, mm -hmm. you're not Playing. playing yeah, you you're not playing a temporary game because and a lot of us, you know this, you know, we just gotta have everything now from yep. The car to the house to the job yep. to the man to the woman. Yep. You know. Yep. Yeah. Have you seen the picture, Sean? I'm sure you have, with God holding the big teddy bear behind yep. his back. And the little girl has the small teddy bear. And she's just like, but God, I love it. And he's just like, trust me, with the big bear behind his back. And so that picture is like mentally ingrained in my head. Um there's always a bigger teddy bear, mm. always, mm. always a bigger one. Um, so yeah, like I said, it gets frustrating, but when you have the discipline, when you've done the work, cause I like Kiara. And so if nobody else is shoot, nobody else chooses Kiara. I love Kiara, like I love that woman, mm. right? So it's enough for, for God to choose me, for me to choose me. And I, I had to get to the place where that was enough for me and that was okay because I knew that I was going to meet these type of people along the way. No, that's beautiful. I, I love it because there's a book. Uh, she says, uh, I think her name is Ned, Nedra Tawab, I think. She got a book on boundaries. Um, very, I mean, just powerful. My wife and I were reading it now because we read books together. Um, so just we can be in sync on certain things. And she said, never betray yourself to make someone else happy. And that's what happens to a lot of people. They betray themselves. So. How do people get caught in situationships? Potential and loneliness. <laughs> Top two. Top two, the only two that I know. Um, so chapter nine of my book is about situationships, um, my, my mini. Um, but you get caught up in the potential. Well, it starts off from being lonely. Let me be com completely honest. Like, or in my case, that's what it was. Like, I felt very lonely. I'm like, I want some company. Um, and a lot of the times I've just be coming out of something. Now this is young Kiara, right? Now I'm a true Kiara. Kiara, they don't like being by herself. Kiara, they don't want to deal with no heartache. Kiara, they believed in a sin to get over another man. You get up under another one. Women, please don't do that. Men, don't do it. It's toxic. Um, so I was living by that at the time. And I just wanted the company of somebody. But as you have that company, you're doing this trauma bonding because that's what it is. Um, you start to think about the potential of it. Like, yeah, this, this could possibly be something. He's not that bad. She's not that bad. They have some qualities that I like. I think we could make it work. Um, so you get caught up in the potential and most of the time you just don't want to be by yourself. So that situation becomes enough. You, you kind of settle for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I posted a video that uh, 
it wasn't very well received, but it was worth uh-huh. the conversation. And I talked about how I settled for my wife. Now we we look at settling as a bad thing. Uh huh. Let, let me break it down real quick. Break it home. I'm waiting. <laughs> Settle. When I say that, that means that when I met my wife, because when you're dating, you know you you're trying to figure out the best person that's gonna work for you. Now, eighty percent is everything that my wife had of what I was looking for in a woman. So with that eighty percent, I'm like, eighty percent is great. That's passing. If I get an 80 on my test, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't mean that I settled, meaning that she was less than or anything of that nature. It just meant that I was content with what I had. And I think a lot of times people aren't content. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is some people chased, they try to chase the 90% and leave the 80%. And I'm just throwing some numbers out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. They try to chase 90 and lose 80. Yeah. Because they like, Kiara's a, a good woman, but she only has 80% of what I need. But maybe let me try to find 90. Yeah, absolutely. So they fumble Kiara trying to chase the 90. And they realize that they don't, that very few people are 90%. Yeah. And if they are 90%, what's the chances of them wanting you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's good. So they fumble Kiera trying to chase 90 and 100%. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's what I, when I say that I was settled, that I was good. I was like, oh, let me take you off the market. Let's go, mama. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. We settled for good enough. And um, I have a, a similar, very, very similar um, experience. Again, I go back to my book. And like the last relationship, I talked heavily about how um, he was good for me, right? But he wasn't it for me. It is very possible for somebody to be good and to not be it um, because I'm looking for great, if I'm being honest. And great may not, you know, may not look like 100%, like you said, um, but it's my 100%, what I consider to be, you know, all the things that checks off the boxes for Kiara and likewise checked off the boxes for him. Um, and, and we do, men and women are there. We both do it. Like, it's just like, we're living in a society, especially right now to go back to your first question where dating is horrific. Um, I'm gonna stop saying it. Cause <laughs> again, I have, I, I'm dating someone really nice right now, but it took a lot to get to that. Um, but we, see people who are good enough and you're so fearful because you know the pickings are are very slim and you just take it you just take it and then you know you go back to that feeling of feeling alone in a relationship because there were some things that you settled for that you find out later is a non-negotiable for you Mm. right like those things that you don't put a magnifying glass on you're like okay i don't like that but I like all these other things so I can get past that. And you get into the long term of it and you realize, no, I can't get past that. Mm -hmm. You know, I I really don't like this person in their entirety for me. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I'll make sure I go watch that video and put some nice stuff under it since you said you didn't get get good reception. Yeah, and it's all good. It's just that it's different because you always hear people say, never settle. You know, as, yeah. if, as if settling is a bad thing. You know, I, I think even with today's culture, I think it's, it's just like kids with toys, right? Like they get their toys mm-hmm. and then they play with it for two days and they throw the toy to the it's side and now they want another toy, you know? And it's just like, well, how many toys you need to make you happy? Yep. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, and, and at the end of the day, I knew what I value. So I was good. I'm like, shoot. She loved me. I love her. She wanted to marry. I want to marry. These are yeah. our core values. The core. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our core values match. Now there's little idiosyncrasies that, that, you know, and, and to me, those things, the relationships aren't based on compatibility is how you deal with incompatibility. Absolutely. I need to give you the collection plate. <laughs> I, I, agree. I, I agree. I tell people that all the time. I'm like, 
you. Bouncing from relationship to relationship because you are having disagreements. You don't agree. I'm like, that's not that's not realistic. You go to the next relationship and you're gonna deal with something else. You have to identify what that something is that you can deal with and can't deal with. You're gonna have to work through something. So you just have to decide what's your non-negotiables and what can be worked through. The difference between compromise and something that's non-negotiable because a lot of it is just compromise. Like it's just compromise. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Because those things, those different things that make you two different is the very thing that helps you both grow and mature. For sure. You know, so when yeah. people are runners, when they avoid those issues and they jump from relationship to relationship, they are avoiding having to do the necessary work. I told my friend the other day, great marriages aren't found, they are built. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So you have to build that thing and that comes with adversity. So yes. it's okay. You know, a pastor once told me, he said, he said, uh, adversity is God's university. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's necessary. It is. And it's, and how crazy is it, you know, that we welcome and some of us don't, but overall we do. If, if you are walking this walk in Christ, um, we welcome the pruning from God, right? Because he allows trouble. He allows tribulation. Like he literally uses it to make us better. Like he tells us like, what is good? I'm going to prune it. Like I'm going to, I'm going to keep twisting you because I need you to just sharpen up and keep growing. Right. And, you know, he allows us to go through all this trouble to get to beauty on the other side. And if that is the person who demonstrates the ultimate love to us, why is it that we run scared when our physical person here on earth at the first sign of trouble is just like, oh, that's a deal breaker. That's a deal breaker. I'm like, you know, adversity is a good thing. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I said, there's adversity and differences in relationships that should be a deal breaker. There's, there probably is a non-negotiable, but at the core of it, adversity within itself should not shake relationships the way that it does. People have a fight or flight mentality. Um, I, I say all the time, whenever I'm dating somebody, I'm glad that you like me now, but I, I, I'm, let me see what you're like when you can't stand me. When you don't think I'm so so cute today and I can't stand her, she, she cute and all, but she getting on my nerves. I wanna see how you feel about me then. You know, that's that's when you can determine, you know, what, what kind of bun, like he said, what type of foundation you built with somebody, how you guys overcome that, because it's only going to make you stronger. But you got to get to that point. You got to see through that point and come out on the other side. Mm, for sure. So much wisdom in this episode. Um, oh, my God. See, this is why I bring you back. This is why. <laughs> And we're gonna have to do this again because I'm well. sure there's so much more that we have to discuss. But I want to make sure that I respect your time. Uh, Kara, mm -hmm. let everyone know how they can get in touch with you, how they can buy the book, all the other good stuff. So you guys can reach me on my Instagram at blue underscore beauty. That's B-L-U underscore B3. A-U-T-Y. That's my Instagram. And to purchase the book, you can purchase it at Amazon. And to get a personally signed copy from me, you can order from my website. It is www.stickysituationsgg.com. All right. I'll make sure I have that linked up in a description or in the comment section so people can make sure that they purchase their book. Make sure you go pick the book up, Brave Hearts Community. I only bring you the best on this show. Kiara, I want to acknowledge you for uh, loving yourself authentically and not settling for uh, just anything. Having the boldness to, to walk in that, not just talk about it, but to actually walk into that. And um, just want to acknowledge you for being firm in your faith and having standards. I think we need more of that and also just acknowledging you for being the author and stepping out and being 
uh, very open about past relationships and how God has worked on you and your personal life and where you are today. So I want to acknowledge you for those things. So continue to inspire. Thank you, Sean. It means so much. I appreciate you so much. And thank you for your platform. Thank you for giving me the platform to speak, um, to help reach other people and, you know, help out people with their healing journey because it's hard. So thank you so much for what you're doing on your platform and for giving people like me the opportunity to speak. Yes, for sure. Anytime. Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go connect with Kiara because she got so much wisdom to offer. We need more of that out here in the social media streets. <laughs> Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this video with someone. Or if you're listening via podcast, make sure that you are sharing this uh, audio podcast with someone. Um, just make sure. And you also, you can leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. By doing that, that puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free things? This is Sean Heineman with special guest. Kiara Taylor. All right, Brave Hearts community, take care. <laughs>